It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. Today, I'm hoping I'll be able to review for you a AN Pro 2 60% keyboard. So it's actually the Obin's AN Pro 2 60% NKRO Bluetooth 4.0 Type C RGB mechanical keyboard. Wow, what an absolute mouthful. Now, I want to say that for complete transparency, this video is not sponsored by Banggood, but the keyboard provided to me is provided from Banggood. Uh, this one was a bit of a, a strange one. I'm going to have a very short whinge on it in the sense that they asked me if I wanted to review it. And of course, I said, fantastic. Yes, more than happy to review it. So they shipped it and they gave me a shipping number, but they didn't tell me what company it was with. And I had no idea. A couple of weeks passed, and then Banggood said, how come you haven't picked up the parcel? And I went, I don't know who you shipped it with, and your tracking doesn't tell me anything. Turns out, they'd actually asked one of their local supply chain within Australia to ship it to me, and they'd used a particular courier service. The courier service claimed to have tried to deliver it three times, but they didn't actually leave me a card in my mailbox each time, even though their tracking system said it did. So it was just as well Banggood, and I want to say thumbs up for their customer service, followed up on it because when I called the courier service to find out where the package was at and how I could get hold of it, they had actually told me that it was going to be returned to the sender tomorrow. So today was actually the last day at the time that I'm recording this that I could actually go and pick it up. So I had to actually get off work a touch early so I could get home and drive to the depot to pick it up. So bad couriers, good customer service from Banggood in actually following up the parcel and letting me know that they had already attempted to deliver it. So I've got it here. It's in a typical gray sack. Uh, let's switch over to the desktop and have a look at a couple of things. So off goes the desktop. Sorry, off goes the logo and on goes the desktop. So there you go. That's the sticker that they tried and pretended that they had delivered. I don't know, whatever. Either way, it's here. But before we actually cut it open, maybe let's just check out what is going on with... Whoa, my bad. Recursive. That was a bit trippy, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, what a day. Okay, so here's the keyboard that I'm expecting to see in here. And this is the details. This is what the current cost is in Australian dollars and you've got options for blue, brown and red. I actually have no idea what's going to be in here off the top of my head. Um, so it claims NKRO, it says it's a 60% ANSI, it's an ABS case, cherry switch, we can use wired or Bluetooth. Okay, so that's really cool. Um, now I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to get the Bluetooth to work with my desktop because supposedly my desktop has Bluetooth built into the motherboard, but I've never actually had to use any Bluetooth devices natively. All the other Bluetooth devices that I've had previously, like a Fitbit, had its own dongle. So it'll be interesting to see if it actually comes with one or not, or if I will try and rely on what's actually built in. We can see it's got a 1900 milliamp uh, rechargeable battery. It's got PBT double shots, so that'll be interesting. And then it's a USB-C cable, which would be pretty cool. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here in, in sort of specking out the details, how to pair it. Apparently you can go up to four devices. Long press F function two key with the Bluetooth key and one, two, three, four until the key blinks and search the device and choose to connect. So, so that'll be interesting. Ah, here we go. Does the Bluetooth have a dongle? No. So you're going to need a separate dongle to pair it. I don't have that. We'll find out if it will connect to my PC. And you can see underneath, that's actually what I've got on. I've already got that. So now it says Don Win 10. Um, and you can of see the other devices that I've currently got going. So we will have a crack open at this and see if we can get that pairing to work. Right, turn that off. Let's cut this open. Absolute barbarian that I am using a blunt knife. Okay, so 
It was sent with a, a courier and no packaging, no protection whatsoever. Um, that's not Banggood's fault, that's the local supplier's choice. Well, it's a nice box, it's very, it's very simple. Keep doing the same thing, make change. Bit of uh, interesting English there. <laughs> Keep doing the same thing, make change. I don't know what it's trying to tell me. The side just says Obins, nothing on the front, Obins on the back. Okay, so we're talking it's black. Uh, I don't know what that other SKU says, 60% dual mode. And then if we flip it on the back, it says it's a brown switch, a cherry brown. Well, you know what? Can't be begging choosers here. You get what you get and we make the most of it. So as it says, Standard dimensions, uh, let's see if I can get that to focus a little bit better. Okay, so product size, contents, uh, phone number, an address in China. Doesn't say very much else about that. I actually wonder if they have a weight in here. Does it actually tell you how much it weighs? Be curious to know, because obviously having the battery in it would uh, make a bit of a difference compared to keyboards that don't have a battery. So no, it's only got dimensions, it doesn't talk about the weight from a very quick look at it. So let's zip back up to the top. Does um, the actual Banggood listing talk about the weight anywhere in the specs? Ah, oh, there we go, 635 grams, 635 grams. That's what we're expecting. It's got a bit of heft in it, but of course it's the box packaging. And I don't know if this has been used or not before, but uh, that didn't feel very crisp, like it was a new keyboard. Might have been. I feel like it might not be new. And that's okay, I don't have a problem with that because these flaps were already folded in. Normally, I would expect that to be slotted in here, right? Um, oh, I know why. It's because they are so massive that there is no way they would actually fit in there. So that's uh, a really interesting box design. All right, so a bit of a tear there. That's, uh, oh, okay, so that whole thing lifts up. And, oh, this is really interesting. I, there's some colored keycaps there. Um, is that, okay, so the set does actually come with it. So we've got a cable, nice. We've got a, a proper puller, which is actually also really nice. So, okay, so now I'm just gonna switch monitors again and show you what the listing says. So we're expecting to see the keycaps, yes. The puller, yes, the cable. So therefore there must be a manual in here somewhere too. Which interestingly is is not on, not on the underside yet, but it might be underneath the keyboard itself. So let's, Lift it, yeah, okay, and then there it is. All right, so everything in the box that's meant to be here is here. Uh, and there's, it's not really a manual so much as a, one of these big paper fold-out things. Uh, let's turn that off. Okay, so there we go. So there's a quick start guide. So you power it on, connect it. Uh, or if you want to do Bluetooth, five seconds and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'll take that out. I don't need the puller. I'm not going to play with those keycaps. I'll keep that out. I'll put that back in. And it's in the phone. And you know what? First impressions, besides the fact that it's got a gamer font on it, I think it's quite nice. Right, here we go. So, there is the Albans and Pro 2. I mean, that, that's actually a really nice presentation. It's got dual printed keycaps. So, if I lift that and it, you see the front print, you can see that it's got uh, some arrow keys on the WASD. We've got magic function there. We've got the function row front print. On the spacebar, it actually says AND PRO 2, which is pretty cool. And then you've got some other sort of secondary function keys for the nav cluster, page up, page down, insert, delete, 
home and and so forth PS whatever PS stands for now we're just having a quick look around focus focus there we go so there's the USB-C port on that side which is fairly typical on the underside we've got off and on we've got a, a power switch there off and on QC pass supposedly it's got a, a nice logo there which is sort of embossed into the case and Pro 2 made in China powered by Urban's lab now there is no feet so you can't change the angle on this you can't flick it up which you know it's an interesting choice I have a preference for keyboard cases with feet but it's got quite a high angle on it I'd say that's probably a I don't know maybe is that a 5 or a 7 let's have a quick look again on the web page if it shows anything about it no so the front is 2.6 and the back is 4 centimeters so it's got it's got a bit of heft to that now brown switches okay yeah tactility is is noticed and of course got to do that and we have brown switches there we go what is immediately interesting is it's got a white plate it's got a white plate it looks to be a white painted plate which I don't know maybe that's there to help the uh, RGB-ness bounce they are cherries they are SMD switches because the actual LED RGB bit at the top you can sort of see is a flat it doesn't have the holes for standard LEDs there is something really interesting going on here next to the G key because there's some kind of weird bend in the plate let's just take the H off and look at that what's what's going on there that metal has a tab that's bent in and then of course you can see a, a hex key an allen key type screw there that's uh, holding that assembly together so that's really interesting I've never seen that before and there's another one down here I'm, I'm getting distracted by the way because I've never had see look there's there's this other thing that's that's happening over here the actual plate's been bent in I wonder I wonder what's up with that hmm very interesting all right while I've got the key puller out anyway how about I take one of these stabilizers off so we can check out what kind of stabilizers they've chosen to go with in this keyboard uh, I hope it's not CoStar because that's I personally don't like CoStar <laughs> personal preference there we go so we've got actual cherry style but they are plate mount they are cherry style plate mount stabilizers I don't actually know if they are officially cherry ones or if they're just clones but they move they go up and down so they're pre-lubed as well I can see some lube in it I don't think the camera is going to pick that up but they are actually pre-lubed which is which is cool which is really cool now before I plug it in I want to weigh it so we can get that I can get that out of the way and then we can run it through uh, I don't know a bit of testing to see how it types so I've got my trusty kitchen scales so the mark that we're trying to hit is 635 I believe 635 is what we are looking for 635 okay tear and 614 all right that's interesting now if I put this on it is that going to get me my 635 654 all right so it's uh, I don't know am I missing something 20 grams is it's 20 grams but that's like 20 keycaps worth of weight right there so uh, I'm not quite sure but it's close enough you're looking at about 600 gram keyboard it's, it's basically like hauling a, a bottle of water around with you if you're going to be carrying it right so cable 
Anything on that? Nope, that's just a generic. So let's put that in quick. And then, so I actually, I have a cable extender here and it's not uh, USB 3, it's just a USB 2. So hopefully that won't cause any problems. Okay, so there's no lighting that seems to have turned on. Is that because the keyboard needs to be turned on? Right. Let's go back to my piece of paper. Yes, so I need to connect it, turn it on, and then it should be good. Hello? Nothing happened. I normally expect RGB keyboards to uh, have some fancy lights. <laughs> so I don't know. Now I've just got a notepad open and it's not it's not doing anything. I'm just wondering if it's uh, I'm gonna plug this I've got a fan that's been plugged into it. I'm gonna just turn on the fan. So the fan definitely turns, so there's definitely power. Um, it's definitely on. I mean, it's it's USB C, so I would expect USB C to be would be perfectly perfectly adequate. Unless if this is, is drawing an insane amount of power that this port is just not able to support. Does it need a charge? I'm. I'm very stumped. Now I'm just going to turn that on and I don't even hear the uh, the USB sort of sound that you would normally get when you plug something in a USB. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to bear with me and seeing my, my waist and other... I am wearing pants. Let's see if I can get it into different port. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So I heard the computer recognized that there was a device plugged in. So now there's still nothing. So that's just deconnected and it's reconnected. So that's um that's cool. That's interesting. Um the quick guide's not helping me very much. So I'm going to go to that site and see if I can find what I need to do. I would type the address in with this, but it doesn't work. Uh, slash and pro two tack user tack manual. Okay. So it's auto detected. I've got an English manual. Let's see what it tells me. Okay, connect over USB cable, turn off, turn it off, ah, okay, all right, so it's turned off, hey, okay, right, so if I turn it on, then that is specifically for Bluetooth connectivity, you know what, I can't read. And anybody who's probably watching this video is probably telling me that I'm an idiot right now because it actually says to switch it to off. All right. Okay. All right. My fault. So it's now connected by cable. Um, K 
Okay, so let's get switch hitter going and we can check it out. All right, so switch hitter is now open and switch hitter is now over here. We'll go to just a 104, back across and into switch hitter. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, yeah, Y, and Z. Okay. So it seems like everything is, is working as intended. And I've got a, so you can't see that yet, but I'll show you just in a moment. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Is there something that I've just... Did I do something? So... The reason why I'm saying really interesting is because these arrow keys that I've just done are actually the these three keys here. These four keys. So that's gone left, down, right, up instead of their natural 60% layout. So I wonder if that's to do with something that I've actually gone and pressed uh, to, to get into that mode. So, ah, so it's a tap layout of some kind. Interesting. Okay, so when I, when I press that, you can see the light comes on as well. Uh, whereas, yeah, okay. That's, that's really interesting. Um, because me tapping... How does that even work? So, I, don't, I can't split my recording setup, but the reason why I'm getting my head done in here is, um, depending on how I tap the shifts, it changes what's happening on this side of the keyboard, <laughs> which, is, which is really interesting, because I can go shift and then shift to bring up right shift, which, but I've already got shift pressed, so why do I need to hold down shift to do right shift? Um, so for default and pro two turn tap layer on and set right shift for up function for left right down it so blah 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 blah. You can completely customize it. Please refer to layout setting. So there's there's got to be a section here which is for layout setting. Um, ARP. All right. So, so there's obviously some very complicated things available in this, and the the online manual is actually really extensive. So I'll just show you. So here's here's this chapter that talks about layout settings. So you can actually get into this quite extensively and and reprogram and even do the lighting. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because you kind of need to get software and all that kind of stuff. I'm really just here to to check it out and uh, punch the main features. So let's just go with some light control. So hopefully this will actually work. Function 2 and 0. So function 2 and 0. Ah, Alright. Look at that. Function 2 and 0. Lights on. Lights off. All right. And nine. Ooh. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, look at that. Okay. And then I've got minus and plus for changing the intensity. So that's all the way down and all the way up. Now this is with room lights on, right? So if I turn the, the lights off, I still got daylight happening behind me, but you can kind of see that uh, there's 
there's a lot of things happening there. So it is actually... I'm not going to say that it's super bright, but... And, and that's actually a good thing, because super bright is often quite a painful experience. Uh, and you can see it's actually... It looks like it's per switch, um, you know, which is really cool. Okay, so we've just tested lighting, and, and we know that the lighting is all well and good. So now what I want to do is I want to try the Bluetooth. And the thing is, I don't know if the battery is very charged or not. Uh, it doesn't... I'm not sure if there is a battery indicator. It might be software related or not, but um, we, I guess, we'll find out. We'll find out very quickly. So let me just turn the light back on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, Bluetooth. Right, so let's, first of all, unjack that. Okay. Then we'll turn the actual keyboard on. And then we'll go to my Bluetooth and let's go add Bluetooth or other device. It's a Bluetooth device. And let's see if we get what I need. Now it says to turn on and hold down function two and Bluetooth key. Um, for five seconds. Okay, so straight away it actually comes up as that. That was pretty easy. Oh, let's try that again. I have no idea what that Zuz device is, but um. But and it's gone. So obviously somebody very close to me within five meters. All right, so let's go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Let's try connecting again. Hey, okay, connected, ready to go. Done. Now there's, it works. Bluetooth. You can see how bad my typing skills are. But you know what? This is actually really cool because there is no lag. I'm, I'm typing and the response is it's actually really quick and it's really snappy. So I'm, I'm actually really impressed. Now of course if I go to the switch header and you'll see previously we're talking about, you know, like 30, 40 millisecond response times for just random key pressing. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I did a lot of that sort of corner mashing, but if we just go and have a look at some of these other ones, about 40, 40, 70 or so milliseconds. So let's just clear that. And on Bluetooth, Okay, so we're actually seeing very similar times. It's a little bit higher. So between 20 to 30 milliseconds longer is what it kind of... Uh, well, you know, if you do, if you do a standard press, yeah, press um, I think that's actually really more a function of me pressing it than how fast the keyboard is responding because that's like the debounce signal time, right? More than anything else. So I'm actually really, really impressed with that. Of course, what would be a wireless keyboard, right, if you couldn't turn the lights on? So now that it's disconnected from the actual power, 
have we got lights? So it was function. Yeah, look at that. We can drop it down. And we can bring it back up. I don't know how many levels it has. And we can change the color and the modes. Like, cool. I actually, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. I don't even know what mode that was. I think I might have just turned the light off. Yeah. So we're going through static, cycling, different cycling, rainbow, and then off. Okay, no, that's cool. That's cool. So far, so good. Uh, very, very easy to work with. Now, it claims to be able to pair up to four devices. I do not have four devices, but I do have another device, which is my mobile phone. So, you can get to see my little girl there. And I'm going to go and turn on Bluetooth. Okay, so available devices should be, this is still on. So now I'm going to go with P2. So function P2, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so now the phone, you're probably not able to see the screen. <laughs> the glare is, is too, too strong. And it says Ampro P1. Okay, so that's just, and it's paired. Wow, super fast. I don't know if that's gonna, no, the glare is, the glare is, is definitely preventing that from working. And, okay, so up the top, uh, use your Ampro to keep this device unlocked. Tap to set up, uh, select keyboard type. So it, it actually set as a default, uh, it's English, English. Hey, it's even got Colmac in here. Um, all right, so let's go back. Okay, so now if I say go to Chrome or something and then I open just a new browser, I go to the type bar and I type in www. You can't see any of this and it's not because I'm, I'm pretending, but it's, it's just unfortunate how it is. But this is actually working. This is really amazing. I've never had a Bluetooth keyboard before, so I'm I'm absolutely gobsmacked at at how well this is working. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, what can I say? I'm speechless. So this is really interesting because I've paired it to the channel two to my phone, but now it's not typing on my desktop, which is exactly what you want. So to switch the host, then I just need to change it with function two. So that's one. So I'll go function two to F1 and and it does it. It, it actually works straight off the bat. Like, whoa. Okay, so back to two. Okay, so there's a little bit of a lag, probably two or three seconds for it to do its thing. Back to one, and I'm still here. Flawless, absolutely flawless. So you know what? You guys, Albans, who put this together, big tick, big tick. So far, everything that I've tried has been fantastic. The only thing that's kind of stumping me right now is this whole um, arrow arrangement thing that you've got. Ooh, okay. That lighting mode, I didn't even realize, but um, it's it's touch lighting, okay? <laughs> you can see how much fun I'm having with this. And and I know this is a half an hour video already. I'm just seeing the time here on the screen as, as I'm recording, but I don't think I've actually had this much fun reviewing a keyboard yet. And I'm really enjoying this keyboard. So, you know what, this is an absolutely solid keyboard. Absolutely solid. 
I am going to go out on a limb right now and say that if you are after a wireless, well, if you're after a Bluetooth wireless keyboard, um, not a Wi-Fi keyboard, because I don't believe this claims Wi-Fi, it's just purely Bluetooth and, and cabled, then, and you're, af and you're happy with a 60% ANSI, like, I'm, I'm actually more than happy to recommend this. More so, the only downside that I have is the keycaps and the font. Um, now the keycaps, it's a gamer font, they're meant to be PBT, they have a PBT feel to them, they're double shot and they've got the shine through on it, but you know what? You can change out keycaps. The only thing about changing out the keycaps though is naturally remembering where some of those presets are and of course, you know, if you're a regular user of it you're not going to have a problem, but if you, you know, aren't fussed about the font, being what it is and it being shined through, then of course you would just naturally keep them. So let's have a quick wrap up on the rest of the things of this keyboard. And the first thing that I'm going to do is the flex test. So if you ever watch a lot of my review things, you know I like to grab the keyboard and give it a bit of a flex. So here we go. So it does have a little bit of flex. I can feel it's got a little bit of give there, but it's actually pretty stiff. It's quite stiff. The corners are flexing and twisting, but it seems to rebound perfectly fine. And when I put it back on my desk mat, it's recovered. It, it hasn't kept the twist. Whereas some of the other keyboards that I've looked at before, when you flex it to a certain degree, and you put it down on the surface, you're gonna get that uneven rocking from the twist. So that's really good. I'm not terribly surprised because it has a battery in it. So they would have put a bit of thought into keeping that rigid case structure and having such a high case and that sort of those hard lines that they've got built into this helps keep that nice and rigid. Now in terms of actual plate flex, I'm not, I'm pressing quite firmly here and there's actually no flex. So the stiffness of that plate, it's it's fantastic. Now if I'm just going to spam the keys for for the sound, the stabilized keys are really quiet. Whereas the non-stabilized keys have a hard bottoming out sound to them. So I'll just show you what I mean. So this is the space bar. Right shift left shift, enter, backspace. So they've all got a muted sound and I suspect that's more so because the stabilizer is there, but they're also looped. So spacebar is actually really smooth. I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised because spacebars are typically quite rattly and a little bit clunky, especially with the plate mount stabilizers like these have. But if you go down to your 1U keys, for example, with the escape, it's got a very harsh sound to it because it's bottoming out either onto the switch um, but not onto the plate. So bottoming out there is, is very, it's very distinctive. Right, right. Now there is an extensive, as I mentioned earlier, programming available by the looks of it. You just got to get the software and, and get into that. I like to keep my layouts mostly default. Uh, if anything, if I was going to program it, yeah, um, I already struggle enough when I use the 40% and my minivan. So a 60% to me is actually quite comfortable because the keys that I have to program into a layer with the minivan is natively there on a 60%. And if I was going to do extensive amounts of numbering and things like that, I would rather have a numpad rather than reprogramming this and having macros. But it does look like you have the ability to do all of that. So last thing is to just have a bit of a key bash and type through. Um, you know what, let's just have a look at the keycaps again, only because they're PBT, they're double shot. How thick are they? Let's find out. So they are 
They are one mil thick. They're not one and a half. They're not super thick. They are a one mil thick keycap. How much flex do they have? They're actually quite stiff, which, which is nice. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Alright, so I'm going to drop the microphone down a bit, get a little bit closer, and I'll just do a bit of random typing to give you an idea about what this sounds like with Cherry Blues. You know, that wasn't actually too bad. I would say that if you put in like some O-rings and things like that, that would take a lot of that hard bottom out sound from the actual uh, full bottoming out. And it would actually sound quite nice. Spacebar and enter, I'm, I'm more than happy with that. It being cherry browns, tactility wise there, you know, cherry browns, gator on browns don't generally have the most tactile response so for me it's a bit of a meh but you know what you could probably crack this open which I'm not going to do uh, anytime soon anyway and then swap out the switches yourself right and you can put in your favorite switch and it would most likely still retain everything and anything that it does as long as you make sure it's compatible with the RGB lighting okay so you need to get the right housings even if you do a, a like a, a stem swap or something like that with other cherry types or MX types that fit, then that might be a solution as well. So, conclusions. Wrapping up this extremely long video, uh, <laughs> which is about right for me when I review stuff. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a good eight and a half out of 10. I'm gonna give it a good eight and a half out of 10. It loses a point for having these keycaps and the gamer font, I believe there must be a way that you can create keycaps that allows RGB and backlighting in a more tasteful manner than standard gamer font. And it loses half a point because I feel like for the price at $150 thereabouts Australian, they could include a Bluetooth dongle. Just a little tiny little thing like like the Logitech um, universal receiver mouse kind of thing, right? It would just sit in there. And I actually think that would probably be a far better investment than those colored keycaps that came with it. So, you know, like the key pool is nice, which is great. It, it, it's really nice, but it's such a random inclusion because the rest of it's black you add a bit of color pimp to it, but then it's really weird, especially because like they're blanks. So I just don't know what the logic is in, in the inclusion of these, especially because it's not WASD, it's modifiers and bottom rows and, and an escape like, uh. now in terms of other bits and pieces, uh, Cable quality seems all right. It's decent. It's, uh, it's obviously retaining its memory from being curled up, but maybe over time, if you were you know a bit careful with it, you might be able to straighten up. But nothing special or to write home about. So there you have it. That is the Albin and Pro 2 Bluetooth RGB 60% NKRO mechanical keyboard courtesy of Banggood. So thank you very much to Banggood for sending this. Uh, I actually love it. So I may be looking at more opportunities to use it, especially because it's now paired to my phone. Uh, yeah, I don't know about using it for work though, but 
we'll we'll see. Work has particular policies, but we'll we'll see. All right. So I don't know if I'm going to have a a product code or a discount code or anything like that available to me. It depends on if the Banggood rep has something that they'd like me to share. If there is one, then you'll find it in the description on the video below or in the post on Reddit or any of the other avenues that this video may go out onto. Otherwise, if you are interested, then please just head to the generic link or look this up yourself and uh, make sure you get the right switch type to what you prefer, unless of course you plan to swap it out. So if this is the first time you've ever seen any of our videos, uh, and you're not aware the BOD podcast is actually a podcast about mechanical keyboards. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio. You can find us on our website, links below and so on and so forth, or in our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, and if you'd like what you see here, please hit that like button. Please hit that share button. Please hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to support us in other ways, we've also got a Patreon that you can get involved with. So... I'm going to wrap it there. I'm going to be short of 50 minutes. Not exactly a record, but we were getting there. So thank you very much for checking out this video. And of course, until next time, happy clacking. <laughs>